Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We can truly give God a praise. Amen. Amen and amen. Our hearts are overflowing. And we are forever thankful to your awesome prayers. We serve a mighty God. And when you go through a valley of a shadow of death, and you don't know what is going to happen next, it can be very challenging. But I thank God that as my wife and I, we abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. And in the shadow of the Almighty, His shadow overshadowed that shadow of a valley of death. And we are thankful for your prayers. We love you. Holy kiss to all of you. Because it's a miracle that my wife is 100% with no negative symptoms. And we just rejoice in that. Today, I want to talk about what is an enemy crusher. You know, when you go through a challenging moment and you look at your spouse and we had conversation where, God bless you, my brother, Charles, a powerful and apostle of the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Love you. And Sharon, God bless you. We love you all. Hallelujah for your prayers. My wife and I, we had a conversation in the midst of this heavy trial. And that conversation is, I said, Lovey, what would you like me to do? Should you graduate? And of course, I was a big mess. Uh, I was just weeping, crying, and I knew that I was not supposed to because somebody had to be strong in the room. But, you know, after three days or so, uh, it just got too much. And I said to her, what would you like me to do? And we had this conversation. And she said, you need to continue to do what God wants you to do. And many other things we discussed. We all know that life is very sensitive and unpredictable. You never know when it is your time. And in the midst of turmoil, I had to find the peace that was already inside of me. And sometimes... It's easier said than done. Because I want to be real with you. It's easy to say to somebody, have peace. Just have peace. Have peace. And not knowing what they're going through. But in the midst of that, we quickly recuperate. And I said, Lord... Your will be done. But I still said, do not take my Lizzie right now. Because I don't know what I will do. Of course, deep inside of me, I knew I will continue. But you're going through this turmoil in your life. And the greatest enemy crusher I want to reveal to you today the greatest enemy crusher. I want us to look at just the one thing today, just the one thing that helped me through this, that helped my wife through this, because your thoughts in a time of turmoil has to be steadfast, has to be consistent. And if we allow anything to uh, want to shipwreck our faith or 
our optimism in the face of a turmoil, we can actually rob ourselves of a blessing. You've got to know that we serve a God of covenant. And there are different covenant names of God. But I want to focus on the one covenant name of God. He's the God of peace. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. In John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. We are to fight off uh, all the uh, negative possibilities. W what if this happened? Then that can happen. Then that can happen. And my wife and I, we, we just started to sing in the hospital. We started to praise our God against the odds. And doctors will come in and say, uh, what a delightful room. Even the, 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 the chaplain of the hospital will come and say, what a delightful room, atmosphere. They put actually on the uh, report that my wife, I don't want to tell you her age, you are the youngest, I'm going to say senior, that we've ever seen coming through a stroke and they could not believe the faith and how God rescued my wife through your prayers all of us we were praying intensely people from different countries were praying and I know that this is a miracle. This is nothing about a preacher's uh, self-abilities or this or that. This is God's love and grace that came through prayers that were answered. One of the doctors said, one of the doctors said, uh, and I don't want to be too specific, he said, you know, we've now gone through all this. And I don't want to say, you know, don't want to be too specific because he's got a very great position in uh, St. Louis, at the St. Louis University Hospital. But he said, I want to ask you something completely different. Just tell me. Uh... I'm in a situation where I believe this and my spouse believes that. Uh, what must I do to be saved? Just about. He says, what must I do? How should I believe? And God enabled me to present him the gospel in just about 20 seconds. Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, that God is has raised him from the dead, that Jesus died for your sins, that God raised him from the dead, number one. Number two, be baptized into the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to start your new life. And number three, attend a Bible-based church that preaches the word of God uncompromisingly. And number four, develop a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ, just like that. And he just looked and he was like astonished. He says, he's, he said, well, you know your stuff. That was just, you know, an expression. And he says, I, I received this. And we had many other people coming in. 
the uh, nurses, some of them, the medical staff, their dad is a pastor. Their dad is a pastor. They've got ministry and they are serving my wife. It's like God put my wife through your prayers and God's grace and love in an atmosphere of people that were actually believers or their family were in ministry. And some of the neuro uh, surgeons began to call me pastor. I mean, I'm just a servant of the Lord, but they saw it. And they saw God in the midst of turmoil. My wife had them in uh, laughter eventually because of answered prayer. And every test came back. The final one was putting a camera and uh, looking at the heart from the back. And all that was negative. A heart is good because a heart is after God. A heart is after God. Just another four minutes or so, then I'm going to close. Jesus says that uh, I'm going to prepare a place for you. He says, I leave you my peace. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the covenant name of God the Father. The Prince of Peace can conquer any storm. In Isaiah 53, before I'm going to give you the scripture where it says about the enemy crusher, Isaiah 53, I just want to turn there briefly, uh, Isaiah 53, just give me a moment here, mm -hmm. Isaiah 53 verse 5, are you ready? It says, now on the cross he fulfilled this prophecy. Jesus fulfilled this prophecy on the cross. The punishment that brought us peace with God and with others. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Hallelujah. By his wounds, we are healed. Now we have peace with God and with one another because Jesus Christ provided that peace. But wait, this peace, when you embrace this peace, it activates the healing stripes of Jesus Christ. Please catch what I'm saying. I'm about to close. I'm going to read that again. Isaiah 53, 5. On the cross, he fulfilled the prophecy, the punishment that brought us peace. He took our punishment. He took our punishment. The enemy doesn't like you and I. The enemy wants to punish us with sickness. The enemy wants to punish you and I with fear. The enemy wants to punish you and I with intimidation. The enemy wants to use his tactics to punish us. But Jesus Christ took our punishment, hallelujah, at Calvary. And it says, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his stripes, his wounds, we are healed. Glory to God. Go with me to the enemy crusher now. Romans 16, 20, and let's close. Romans 16, 20. Thank you for watching, and I trust that I can just reach one person today for the glory of God. Romans 16, Romans 16, 20, verse 20, and the God of peace will crush, oh, hallelujah, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. 
the peace of God is an enemy crusher. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Straight after that, in the same verse, it says, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. And now, in the same verse, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. The grace of God empowers you not to see yourself through your flesh, but to see yourself through the finished work of Calvary, where Jesus Christ became our punishment where Jesus Christ became our punishment. Jesus Christ became our shortcoming. Our, our, he, he became our sinful nature. Jesus Christ became the ugliness of sinfulness in me as an individual. And it says, now, it says, so when you embrace that grace, and you don't see yourself the way that the devil wants to see, the devil wants you and I to see ourselves through our flesh, our shortcomings. Don't do that. God looks at you through the finished work of Calvary. God looks at you through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And it says, the punishment that brought us peace in Isaiah 53 was upon him. Now watch. In Romans 16, 20, uh, sorry, uh, back there, Isaiah 53, 5, th that punishment that he took, that brought us peace, and then by his wounds we are here. When you walk in that total peace with God, when you live at peace with God, he will cause your enemies to live at peace with you. And in Romans 16, 20, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Hallelujah. Peace is one-third of the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Peace is the center that holds righteousness and joy together through peace. Now, if you've got any infirmity, sickness, I'm going to stretch my hand out towards this camera right like this. And I want you to touch as handkerchiefs touch the Apostle Paul and were, were taken to people and they got healed. Demonic spirits came out. You just touch my hand. If there's anything in your body through this camera. So Father, anyone who's stretching out their hand towards my hand, it's not by my might or power, but by the spirit of the living God. I declare healing over people's lives. I declare restoration, deliverance. I address any unclean demonic spirits of infirmity and unclean spirits. You go from people's lives. You go. And I command that the healing stripes of Jesus Christ be invoked in eradicating people from infirm spirits. Your word declares, you've sent forth your word to heal, and I'm sending forth your word over the media waves right now to heal and restore. And I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive that by faith today. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. And don't forget that God loves you regardless of your or my shortcomings. He loves us so much that he gave his son Jesus Christ for us. Thank you. A holy kiss to all of you that have been standing with us and praying us through this. Until next time, remember, Jesus is Lord. God bless you. Bye now.